Uh, hello, I think it's time to start. Uh, I want to introduce you our next speaker. This is uh, Diman Karagiozov, who is senior software developer at Linpuam. Uh, Diman has more than 15 years of experience, uh, mostly in Java-based applications. Uh, and uh, this is his first time at our stage here at OpenFest. Uh, today he is going to talk about uh, how to achieve resilience and fault tolerance in microservice architectures. So, Diman. Shall we go on in English or switch to Bulgarian? How do you prefer? English, okay, good. Because the terminology is quite uh, English oriented, thank you. <laughs> so today we are going to talk about uh, circuit breakers, which is something that you have uh, in every in each house, and how this applies to software. This is what we are going to uh, learn today. But first, <clears throat> I would like to stress, uh, I'm not talking about uh, explicit microservice architecture, but I would like to stress out about what's the difference between a monolith application and the microservices. So basically a monolith is uh, something that you operate uh, at full scale. You cannot move uh, a certain part of it without moving the whole part, while the microservice is uh, something more uh, um, configurable, you can move it, uh, deploy differently, and so on. A more software-oriented uh, microservice, despite these containers, is uh, on the left side you see a monolithic application where everything is in one place, and uh, it actually, uh, you can scale it only vertically, while on the right-hand side you have uh, uh, the same, let's say, theoretical application, uh, which uh, is built with microservices, and uh, each of these microservices you can scale horizontally or vertically, and uh, looks right, good. However, there is one problem on the right-hand side, and uh, usually it is not how you build your services. They can be very robust, uh, very error-prone, uh, but the problem that uh, we usually do not uh, anticipate is, are these uh, extra black lines that you see between the components. These are the communication lines. And uh, it's quite often that uh, some communication lines are broken. So what happens with your nice and shiny microservice architecture in this case? Uh, what is the point of this lecture today is uh, to anticipate the fact that uh, the failure in such complex systems uh, distributed, deployed in the cloud or wherever is inevitable. So as soon as you uh, accept this as a fact, the better your next architecture will be, the more resilient and the more fault tolerance it will be. And uh, this was the short intro. Uh, let's come to the circuit breaker. So what is a circuit breaker? Uh, it's a borderline component. It actually uh, protects your uh, infrastructure, your appliances at your home, from high current uh, over the electricity network. Um, it also prevents uh, failures of uh, your, uh, some of your appliances in case of a short circuit. And uh, in this case, uh, your uh, uh, for example, washing machine makes a, is a short circuited, but the rest of the appliances continue to work. So how these two characteristics of the circuit breakers uh, apply to the software uh, architecture? And how do we translate them? So we can think of a high electric current to be a high load on your system. For example, you have a very big uh, query, uh, number of queries per second, which uh, actually can uh, lead to a denial of service at the end. And uh, the short circuit translates to a component failure. For some reasons, one of your components uh, is not available because of you or because of the infrastructure, it doesn't matter. But uh, in this case, it's short circuited. And uh, 
what actually the software circuit breakers do. They isolate the points of, uh, uh, of accessing the remote service. As I said, they are borderline components. They stop cascading the failures uh, so that if you know that uh, uh, some part of your system is not uh, working properly at a given period of time, then uh, you will not send requests and you will not cascade the, or propagate these errors to, to other components. And uh, it also, uh, which is not uh, visible from the, at this point, but uh, I will explain later, it enables uh, resilience in a complex distributed system. So what's uh, resilience? Uh, it's, let's say, almost the same as resurrection, but without the miracle part. <laughs> uh, no, it's a kind of a self-healing uh, 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 characteristics of a, a system or a organism. So uh, I'll show you now how uh, this can be achieved with uh, circuit breakers. So what is a circuit breaker in the uh, software uh, industry? Um, it acts like uh, a normal mechanical circuit breaker with uh, an additional state. So when everything is working correctly, the circuit breaker is closed. So all, all, all requests are uh, performing uh, okay, they return success. But in case of a failure uh, uh, or a subsequent number of fail failures, the circuit breaker uh, becomes open and in this case, uh, the whole infrastructure uh, knows that uh, it is open, so we are going to uh, fast fail all the subsequent requests. Uh, in this case, uh, actually this is quite good because uh, what is worse than uh, uh, giving a, an error to the user is uh, waiting for a period of time and then give the error to the uh, user. So fast failing is something uh, quite good. And uh, after a configurable period of time when the uh, circuit breaker is open, a certain request or a number of requests is uh, uh, passed to the component that is guarded by this uh, circuit breaker. Uh, and in this case, the circuit breaker is moved to this half open state. So it kind of tests whether the component is, uh, is al uh, already alive. Did our engineers do something to bring it back or it healed itself? So in case uh, this uh, one request fails again, we are going back to the uh, open state, but in case uh, the request succeeds through the whole path through the guarded component, then the circuit breaker is closed and uh, um, everything starts working normally. Uh, this is very basic uh, I idea inherited from the mechanical circuit breakers with uh, the additional extension of, of the half open state, which uh, cannot be done, or at least it's not that common to be done with the normal circuit breakers. Um, so this was more or less the theory. Uh, as I'm a backend engineer, mainly in Java, uh, the demo that I'm going to present you will be in Java. So uh, there are two very good libraries that I've worked uh, personally with. The first one is Hystrix by Netflix. Uh, so the Netflix architecture uh, is based on more than 900 microservices. So they desperately needed something like this uh, circuit breakers library. So they came up with Hystrix. The other library that I like a lot is Resilience 4J. It is uh, more uh, oriented to Java 8 and uh, um, it's very light compared to Hystrix, uh, but also it's very feature-rich. Of course, there, there could be other implementations, uh, but with these two strong candidates, I have not searched for other options. Um, so the demo that I'm going to present today is, uh, let's imagine that we are building a book recommendation application. Um, it has a front-end component that should show some uh, recommended books for, uh, for me, being the current user, and the back-end service, uh, which has a recommendation engine in place, and also it provides the list of the latest books. Uh, 
you will see why we have uh, this uh, second service. And uh, because the resilience for j is kind of a more uh, expressive library, I based my uh, demonstration on this library. Um, it can be uh, implemented 100% with Hystrix as well. So, what are our, uh, our test scenarios? Uh, first, we'll see what is the normal behavior of the system uh, when everything is working fine. Then, uh, I've implemented a small uh, service that uh, simulates a timeout of the request. It actually, in every case, timeouts after a random period of time. Uh, so, these are uh, the normal cases when we do not uh, have any circuit breakers. Then the third uh, scenario is when we uh, guard uh, the, uh, the calls to the backend service with a circuit breaker, and we are hitting the uh, timing out uh, recommendation service. In this case, uh, we'll demonstrate the fail fast behavior of the circuit breakers. The fourth case will be when like the third one, but also uh, circuit breakers allows you to define a fallback scenario. So what happens if the request fails or the circuit breaker is uh, open? That's why we have this uh, latest book service. It's better to return, for example, the latest uh, books uh, to the user instead of an empty list or an error, which is worse. And the fifth uh, scenario is uh, more uh, artificial because in the demo I cannot fully simulate this, but uh, it's uh, again a circuit breaker which uh, after a certain period of time uh, closes itself, so the system kind of uh, uh, automatically moves to its uh, initial state and everything starts working correctly. So I in the beginning requests will be failing and after a certain period of time they will start returning OK. So, uh, let's switch now to the demo. Um, so, I've uh, grouped, uh, uh, created a small uh, project. Uh, it's a group like normal uh, client server application. We have a common uh, library where we define our uh, uh, model, uh, a book, it's quite simple. Do you see it, actually? Yeah, okay. Uh, it has a title and an author. And we have a backend uh, application, which uh, implements these two uh, services. One is for the uh, recommendation service, and the other is for the latest. The difference between is that uh, uh, the data access object, which I kind of uh, uh, simulate, uh, returns different uh, uh, dummy books. One are prefix with uh, um, recommendation, and the other are prefix with uh, uh, latest. This is basically uh, the implementation of the service, um, of the two services. Then we have two, uh, actually three uh, handlers, um, HTTP normal handlers like uh, servlets, where you uh, when you call the handle recommend, it will return uh, some randomly generated recommended books with the status OK. Our timing out service where you see sleeps for six to nine seconds and then it uh, throws a timeout exception. Uh, this will simulate that uh, something is going wrong. And also we have the latest handler, which calls the uh, latest uh, books service. It also uh, always returns uh, OK state with a different type of books. Um, so while I'm here, I'll start this uh, small demo. Let me see. And meanwhile, I will explain what's happening on the uh, front-end side. So again, we have uh, here the um, 
the services, the handlers, both front-end and back-end are uh, structured uh, similarly. However, as you see here, we have uh, uh, a different package uh, called resilience, and here we define our circuit breakers, but I'll come to this uh, a little bit later. Um, so here are the different uh, handlers that we will have. One is uh, to handle OK queries. It sends requests to the corresponding backend. Uh, then we have the handler for failing. And uh, let's see actually how it's working at this point. Uh, we start this as well. And let's go to a browser. So, first, we are going to test OK service. Uh, no matter how often you uh, uh, load this URL, it will always return uh, OK uh, uh, response code with a randomly generated, uh, I think, uh, five books. In case we hit the fail uh, uh, endpoint, uh, now we are going to wait between 6 and 10 seconds uh, to get a response, but it's always returning uh, a timeout exception. Okay, so uh, this is the two states of the system that uh, we are going to explore and uh, uh, work with the different, uh, and demonstrate the different features of the circuit breakers. So, what can we configure for a given circuit breaker? Um, it should be... Sorry. I've lost. So, we, what we can configure? It's... Um, four or five different options. Of course, there are a lot more, but these four are very important. First is the failure rate threshold. You define a percentage above which the circuit breaker state is changed from close to open. You can tolerate, uh, for example, 10% failure, but if it goes above, you should uh, inform engineering that something's wrong and uh, move the state of the system in an open state so that uh, uh, requests do not fail anymore. Um, we, in this case, giving timeouts. Um, then the other uh, option that you configure is how long uh, should we stay in an open state be before trying to uh, run a request to the uh, actual uh, service that failed. This is the wait duration. For example, you can say, Okay, I give my engineers uh, 10 minutes to resolve the problem. Hopefully they will do it in 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, I'm going to uh, try to call the, f the failed service again. Uh, the other two options are also important. Uh, this, uh, the, f the, f the third one is the number of requests to be evaluated uh, prior to changing the state from open to close. So before, uh, when the circuit breaker is in a half open state, uh, you can say, okay, I would like to evaluate five requests, and based on this, I will uh, calculate the either I should go uh, to closed or will stay again in open state. Uh, and the other is um, the number of requests to be evaluated prior calculating the failure rate when you are in the closed state. So if you are in, the, in a closed state and uh, you start failing uh, requests, uh, how much requests should uh, collect and compare their response code uh, until you decide whether the circuit breaker should be kept closed or opened. This actually gives us uh, some tolerance uh, uh, against some uh, random failures that uh, are caused by temporary infrastructure uh, problems or something like this that uh, you know that they will they normally happens and you do not want to uh, cut a big branch of your uh, uh, service because one request felt you should evaluate more so that they can um, be um, 
more, more, more fault tolerant. So these are basically the four different options that uh, you have to configure for each circuit breaker. So if you go back to the uh, code, <coughs> we defined here two circuit breakers. One is the default one with a failure rate of 1%, uh, uh, which is kept open for five minutes. This is, uh, there, there are defaults for every uh, option, but for the sake of the demo, I configure it in this way. Um, and the other one is a false fast closed uh, circuit breaker, which is uh, said that it will stay in open state only two seconds and then requests will uh, be sent to the uh, guarded service uh, in a half open state. Uh, you will see how these two are used afterwards. So um, let's now focus on the first more uh, sophisticated uh, use case. This is when we uh, implement the fail fast uh, scenario. Uh, it's not here. This is just the handler. It's, um, so, um, this is implemented actually with uh, juice uh, dependency injection. Uh, you can use uh, Spring or whatever other uh, uh, tool you would like to have. Uh, at some point, you get an instance of the circuit breaker. And uh, instead of, uh, let me see, if, uh, if, let me, me show you first the uh, failing survey what it is doing. It is calling the uh, timeout uh, backend endpoint. So um, this one is also calling the uh, it extends the failing book service, so it's basically calling its get method. However, the call is decorated with a circuit breaker. In this case, uh, as I explained before, if the circuit breaker is open, then uh, the, um, after certain number of requests, uh, uh, we'll start uh, to fail fast with the re request. So um, we can... moment go back to our testing browser which was here somewhere and go fail fast up it's not like this <laughs> sorry So the first several calls will be slow because we are still hitting the backend. I'll reload it several times. I think I've configured it to be five requests before it's evaluated, so a few more clicks. And now you see that the next response is uh, quite fast. And it says that the circuit breaker is open. It does not trip to the failed component, but it direct, the front-end component knows that there is a problem at the moment. Uh, it uh, will um, just uh, fail fast. Still, it is better than uh, waiting for the error, but still we have an error. Um, and here it comes the next uh, demo uh, where we have a fallback. So in case our, uh, uh, it's better first to show the code, sorry. Um, uh, failing fast, failing fast with recovery. It's more or less the same code as you see. We are um, having the same block calling the, again, the failing book service. However, we have a recovery uh, option here. In this case, in our recovery method, we are calling the uh, remote uh, endpoint for the latest books. So what happens? 
now our uh, circuit breaker is in an open state, and uh, we should be uh, we should see that it's uh, calling actually the, the the latest services. So again, back to the browser. Point is called fallback. Ah, it uh, closed. So what you see actually is that uh, the prefix, uh, the the normal state of the system is to re return a prefix recommendation, but now when it is open and we are hitting this endpoint. The prefix is latest, so we entered into the uh, fallback case, and the user do not see any more errors. It again sees a list of books. However, they are uh, slightly different. They are not uh, his uh, books, but the latest books in the system, not recommended by the sophisticated recommendation engine, but just selecting, uh, calling another. Uh, web service uh, uh, that returns latest books. So in this way, we uh, handled the um, um, the situation where a certain component fails, but we are fault tolerant to this fail, and uh, um, we provide a fallback case. And the last. Uh, uh, scenario that I wanted to present is how uh, the service, uh, it, it will again be calling uh, the uh, f uh, failing uh, backend service, but uh, at certain point uh, it will start recovering and uh, the, the circuit breaker will uh, uh, be closed and will not getting any errors. So it is the last uh, um, handler recover. So it's I know it's a little bit artificial, but uh, for the sake of the demo, I designed it in so in this way. Uh, here I'm using a short circuited circuit breaker that it uh, actually uh, closes in two seconds. Uh, based on the number of requests, so that's why I'm having an atomic uh, integer, which is a counter. With each request, I increase this counter, and when it is uh, below the threshold, it returns uh, the f uh, calls the failing service, and when it is above the threshold, it returns the OK service. Uh, I ex decided not to have a, a fallback case as in the previous example in order to demonstrate this uh, behavior that in the beginning we are getting errors and after some period of time everything uh, moves to okay state. Uh, this is a little bit uh, harder to test uh, because I have to hit a lot of requests uh, but I've also made uh, a test uh, with uh, JMeter, a scenario, where all of these uh, five different requests are uh, tested with uh, 10 parallel threads, and uh, each of the endpoints is hit 25 times. Um, as you can see, these are all the five. The last is with the recovery. And uh, here we have a summary report. Um, I can run it again, or in, uh, the tool that I'm using, JMeter, do not scale very good. I don't see. I don't know whether you see the numbers. That's why I put them in the presentation again, which I have to find the window. So what do we see here? Okay, quite normal. Uh, 250 requests with an average of like one third of a second, 0% error rate. The second case with failed timeout, the same number of requests, uh, 7.6 seconds average time, 
very expected as uh, our service is doing this, 100% uh, response time. The fail fast uh, uh, test case, we have a slightly higher average than the OK, uh, because uh, some requests uh, initially uh, hit the failing backend method, but uh, then uh, because of the failing fast procedure, um, we are returning errors. Again, very ex uh, expected, 100% error rate. What do we have when we have a fallback? Uh, in the fallback case, um, this is quite strange that we have a, a smaller uh, average, but these are just uh, rough numbers. Um, when we fail, we should have been waited for at least uh, five requests to fail, um, but then because we hit the, uh, we use the, fall, uh, the recovery method, uh, uh, we have a zero percent of error rate. And last, the recovery, uh, it is, well, twice more than, uh, the average is twice more than the uh, okay, but significantly less than the failing uh, uh, test case. Uh, and because we tolerated some requests to hit the failing backend, uh, and we, we do not have a f uh, fallback uh, uh, case, uh, we have some num numbers of uh, errors. But uh, afterwards, when the system recovered, uh, the, the average uh, time and, uh, uh, went down, as well as the uh, error uh, percentage. So, uh, with this demo, I hope you um, understood how the circuit breakers can help you uh, be kind of a more fault tolerant and more resilient when you design your next uh, um, microservices or uh, actually the circuit breakers can be applied not only in the scope of a microservice, but also inside a, of a monolith. You can guard a, per, a certain part of uh, your code with a circuit breaker and uh, allow it to fail gracefully and handle this failure. Uh, what is very important for the both libraries, uh, the Hystrix and the resilience for j is that they integrate uh, very nicely with uh, uh, Prometheus. And then you can plot these nice graphics in Grafana, define alerts uh, on this, and uh, actually have a lot better uh, understanding of the state of your system, how it is uh, performing, how often something happens, uh, how many user requests has failed, all you can get from uh, the metrics exported by those two libraries. Uh, also very important, you can, uh, the, the, the ecosystem of the circuit breakers is not uh, uh, only circuit breakers. You can combine them with all different uh, extra libraries. For example, you can have uh, also a resilient fallback routine. For example, this. Uh, uh, latest book service may be failing, so you can also uh, uh, decorate the call in the, fo uh, in the recovery method with circuit breaker. So in this case, you have two circuit breakers. You can also retry the initial uh, call, the most inner call, several times before you decide on the uh, state of the response. This is quite often the case that uh, first request, if first request fails for some um, infrastructure problems, for example, temporary loss of DNS service, the second request will go on uh, and be fine. That's why it is quite usual to have a circuit breaker outside and to retry uh, policy inside of the circuit breaker. You can also have a time limiter, late, the rate limiter. Uh, you can also guard a certain piece of your code, uh, how many uh, parallel executions are allowed at a given time. Uh, this is the bulkhead uh, library. And uh, something uh, quite useful that uh, usually you do not have to 
hit the backend service every time uh, because uh, data do not change that often in some cases. That's why you can combine the circuit breaker with the cache. And uh, for example, the uh, resilience for J uh, says, okay, whatever J cache implementation you have in place, plug it here and uh, I will use it. So the, the ecosystem around the circuit breakers is quite rich and I really encourage you to give it a try. Um, it is really not the panacea for all the problems uh, that you may encounter, but uh, it's a good try and to, to move you in the right direction. Um, so I'm now open for questions. Um, <laughs> I was wondering what's this. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation. It was very informative. Uh, could you please describe a sample use case for the recovery circuit breaker? A recovery? Yep. Um, well, this is uh, very uh, common. Your, uh, for example, you're querying a database mm -hmm. and you guard the calls to the database mm -hmm. through a circuit breaker. Um, some requests fail and the circuit breaker is open, uh, the engineers receive an alert and see what's wrong with the database. For example, they restart it. Uh, the, the fail fast one, that, that, is only, that is open only to, for two seconds. <laughs> uh, well, you can, I, uh, only this, for the sake of- These have to be some very fast engineers. I'd like to work with them. <laughs> well, you have to have uh, on-call engineers who are uh, monitoring the system. So uh, yeah, uh, it, it's actually up to you to define how long the circuit breaker should uh, stay open. If you do not have, for example, 24 hour shifts, uh, then you can set it to a longer period of time. What is important is that you configure the alerts properly so that you know what happens with your system so that you can actually take uh, um, actions to resolve the state. So when, in this case, the database is restarted, um, then some requests will pass through, one, two, or three, uh, depending on the configuration, and the uh, circuit breaker will close. And then everything will start working fine again. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? Okay, uh, can you pass to the, the other cube. guy? Okay, <laughs> the cube. Thank you. Uh, so my question is, uh, you have a system of microservices, mm -hmm. let's say 10 and you would like to integrate a circuit breaker in the system, what's the cost in terms of energy, of people, resources, of knowledge, of learning curve? What's the actual cost? Because we would like to see the cost benefit. We can benefit this, but it will cost three people working for five months on this, and then uh, No, support. it is quite trivial to integrate. Uh, uh, as I said, this is a borderline component. It decorates a call to in, in most of the cases, uh, you decorate the call, for example, a given method, uh, if you designed your system properly, to uh, the external system with a circuit breaker. It's just three or four or five lines of code and two or three additional classes. So uh, from point of implementation, it is quite trivial. Mm -hmm. Instrumenting the metrics and the alerts could be a little bit uh, trickier, but if you're expert in Grafana, or you, you may find an expert in Grafana yes, but, who can uh, do this. But, but you have to become an expert. Sorry? But you have to become an, uh, an expert here. Um, so well, I'm not covering here the uh, Grafana and uh, Prometheus configuration uh, because I'm really not an expert, but I managed to do it uh, myself. It was more complex than setting up the circuit breaker. But uh, really, uh, there's almost no learning curve uh, because we always uh, do try and catch and finally blocks in our code. So this is, let's say, more sophisticated try and catch. Uh, so the concept should be very, uh, all developers should be very familiar with this concept. Just uh, they should try to, uh, to use slightly different uh, syntax and uh, that's it, really no extra cost or on the implementation side. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question here, so I can throw it. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is that correct? Is it working? Yeah. Uh, in uh, microservice world, uh, most of the services are implemented in different languages. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so you have a Go, Python, Java, mm -hmm. and if I have to implement that circuit breaking mechanism in all the languages in my infrastructure that is made of, let's say, well, it depends. Uh, uh, where uh, you 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 put the circuit breaker at the color side. Uh, so if it's not Java, you I'm sure there are different libraries for the different languages impl implementing these uh, uh, functionalities as well. So uh, it's uh, yeah have to research and find uh, good libraries. Yeah, I'm sure that such libraries do exist, but uh, in the network world, there are quite a lot of network failure scenarios. So, mm -hmm. for example, a service might start timing out, a DNS might uh, be broken, like mm -hmm. you said, uh, an instance might go down. So, what do you think about possible implementation of circuit breaker, breaker as a service? <laughs> like you have a unified interface to which all your well, uh, different uh, components th This is a, an interesting idea uh, so because uh, then you'll have a kind of a more centralized uh, place yeah, to manage yes. uh, all circuit breakers. But again, you will have more one uh, place uh, where things may fail. And in case uh, you do not have access to this repository of circuit breakers, then uh, what will be the state of your system? Yeah, that but, but uh, in that case, I like following on the gentleman's question before uh -huh. that, uh, you uh, offload all the efforts of all the engineers that have to re-implement all those circuit breakers in different languages. Yes, so, this uh, is correct. Let me just end my uh, idea. So you might want to check a service called Envoy. Envoy, uh -huh. Yeah, uh, so let's uh, just give it a try. It's uh, a yeah, service. Thank uh, you that for was, the suggestion. Uh, uh, open source by uh, Lyft, which is mm -hmm. like a Uber-like company, yeah, so you I might know. want to give it <laughs> to our clients. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, ask them about it. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you very much. Uh, for nothing. Are there any other? <laughs> okay, so continuing my question here, uh, because my app, is, uh, my app is on the cloud, and I can configure my app to auto-scale. Yeah. And when I hit 1,000 requests per second, I can just pay more and it will get to 10,000 requests per second. Mm -hmm. So, and, now, and I know the cost of this. Mm -hmm. So my question is, should I auto scale and add another machine or a load balancer or something, or should I invest in circuit breakers? I think these two concepts are uh, orthogonal. I mean, uh, your no, no, the, the way I understood it is that when I get a lot of load, mm -hmm. I would like to add a circuit breaker there, stop the load, and return some dummy results to the user. Yes, this is this one is the basic concept. case. Uh, if you can afford this, uh, I mean, if your clients can afford not having, uh, in our case, uh, their recommendations but the latest books, that's fine. However, okay, if your service is uh, mission critical, of course, the approach of auto scaling and uh, having uh, more uh, workers is a better solution. It, it, it actually depends on the use case. I'm here mm. presenting. Yes, yes, but from your experience, yes, that was uh, what I was asking. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, uh, if there are no other questions, I would like to say just a few closing words uh, as a conclusion. A wise man once told me that too many messages kill the message, so my message for you today is this one. Not this one, this one. <laughs> uh, accept this fact and uh, start thinking about uh, more resilient and more fault tolerant systems with circuit breakers or with whatever other technology you would like. In this case, when your next architecture uh, behaves more fault tolerant and uh, resilient, you'll have uh, happier customers and your sleep will be much tighter. So, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>